This is a video basically to affirm that Cursor is the sickest, Curse Cursor is the sickest. I was listening to an interview of his basically because he reminds me of a friend of mine in high school. Great guy. I saw him the other day and he's like, hey, how are you, bro? You doing good? Yeah. And I was like, how are you? And he goes, yeah, man, I've got two kids. You. <laughs> I pity them. And he, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. I just want to make that perfectly clear. But damn, this is his job. I said, what are you doing for a living now? And he goes, oh, bro, I don't think you want to know, eh? Oh. Oh, yes, I do. Tax and shit. He tra- <laughs> He tra- <laughs> He tra- <laughs> Travels across the planet. <laughs> Go to Japan. You know, Germany. It's like he's a professional snowboarder, except for he just walks into Uniqlo and takes a bunch of shit and sells it on eBay. <clears throat> but on top of that, it's kind of like Curse, right? Yeah, he's got his demons, but at the same time, he's a sick cunt. <laughs> he's just a really fucking nice friendly lanky dude that likes bongs heaps and anyway so I was watching him because basically it was just going this is that guy except for if he instead of going into rapping he was just being like what what I don't have nothing on me I don't have nothing bail boys bail <laughs> if, if you know if, if the universe was slightly altered in one way he would be curse so I was watching a bunch of interviews with him you know what he's saying? This is the, this is, he has the work ethic of a champion. He is the sickest. He has it. I've got, I've listened to so many musicians over the years. They always say this to me. After I started gaining traction on the net, they started saying to me, do, do you think I'm working hard enough? If you're asking that question, the answer is no. You're not working hard enough. You know why? Because as soon as I started working hard enough to get an audience and then monetize off that audience, what happened in my life was that I would move from going, Whoa, when's this going to do? you think I'm doing enough? Maybe I'm not. It was, fuck, I'm not doing anywhere near enough. I heard that there was this one motivational talker, how's this for motivation, who said, if you're not going to sleep four to five times a week scared, you're not doing enough work. It's kind of true. Now, I understand that there's things that you should do to you know, offset the fact that you're fucking freaked out your entire life and... We've discussed that in previous videos. That's not the main point, but you should be going to bed each night being like, fuck, I don't know, I'm losing my What's gonna happen? I'm gonna work hard. Because it motivates you. The fear motivates you. There's two primary motivators in life. It's pleasure and pain. We'll talk about the benefits of pleasure at the end of this video, because that's basically the main point of it. But again, this is why I know, not again, just the first time, this is why I know the cursor is on the right path. Because when he was being interviewed, this was his basic, this was his basic boil down to the keys to success. It wasn't even the keys. He just has a master key. He's the mayor of success town. Here's what he had. Always doing something, bruh. That's what he, I think he even has it as a tat. I could have completely made that up, but then again, he's probably forgotten as well. His whole body is basically like the lizard man at this point. But remember that phrase. I reckon tattoo it on yourself. If you're going to get a tat, instead of getting one that's like, live fast, die young, is that still hardcore? Is it still 1962? Get always doing something, bruh. Can you even fit that on your knuckles? Always doing something, bruh. You can. It's perfect. That's what you should be putting on, especially if you go to prison. Put that on there. I reckon that's, that is a really nice boil down. The, the wisdom of the straight slap. It just, it just simplifies it to exactly the core element of it. If you're not moving towards your goal consistently, then you're not doing enough work because other people are. This is why I'm always saying, if you want to do something exceptionally great, <laughs> I know, I don't, like, this, is, this is not a very popular opinion. And I know a lot of people are going to go, this is disgusting for the economy, but do as little work as possible. Do the absolute bare minimum for you to be able to survive and then invest all that extra time into your passion, into the thing that actually motivates you, the thing that gets you excited to get out of bed in the morning. Put it all into that because there are people that are doing that and you are never going to catch up to them if it's a side project. Straight up, homie. Truth from the streets part two. That's the boil of it. Always be doing something, bruh. Even if you're at work, a lot of people have bullshit jobs where you really only need to complete 20 minutes of work a day. The rest of that time, 
fuck Facebook. Even though, you know, that's me and Curses living, so keep it on there and watch our shit. But, <laughs> but reduce it a lot and invest that time into something else that's that's going to benefit you. Now, we talked about last time that there's three primary, not last time, last the week before that. There's three things that you should be doing. That if you do, they will propel you into the direction of your dreams. And I hope that you identified those things, but how much time are you spending on them? It's again something that we've addressed in a video months before, but I bet you a lot of you have forgotten it and you've like wasted a lot of time. I have, I waste a shitload of time, but at least I'm conscious of wasting time. So I start wasting less time. I'm aware of the habits that make me start moving into wasting time and I try and avoid them as much as possible. I.e., I moved into the middle of the fucking wilderness so I don't have the internet. <laughs> it's a very extreme measure. And uh, you know what? I'm an extreme kind of guy. I don't regret it at all. Yeah, but I'm sure there's a less extreme version that you could take of that. But I think that after a while, what starts happening is you go, hmm, actually, now that I'm more effective, I'm getting more effective. And the fact that I'm getting more effective, it's a positive cycle. Just like when you become less effective, it's a negative cycle. Everything's like that. Taking drugs or not taking drugs, being healthy or eating fat shit food. You're either spiraling up or you're spiraling down. So which one are you at at the moment? Are you always doing something, bruh? Or are you at least moving towards always doing something? And if you are, give yourself a pat on the back. Now, now that you are, let's remember the old ancient exercise that we drawed in from last year. Let's get this habit in alignment again because there's an old saying in certain neuro-linguistic program that it should be called neuro-linguistic conditioning. You can keep training your brain, but that's the point. It's not like a dog where you can just say, sit, some things are, and eventually do get ingrained into the point where they are that level of habit, but they keep need to be fine tuned. It's not like training a dog. It's like fine tuning a piano. Just keep reminding yourself of these basic truths that you should always be moving towards your goals. And if you're not moving towards your goals, stop what you're doing and make sure that you are. Now that you're doing that, write down, this is, if you can't even get into that mode, because there's a lot of times, for instance, while I'm rehearsing for this video, uh, for this uh, new stand-up show that I'm doing, I hate rehearsing. I just turn into a six-year-old every time and go, oh, I'm not again, uh, I'm hiding, I'm hiding, in the corner. I think I actually did that once. I think I actually did just curl into a ball going, oh, no, I hate this. I don't like doing things that I don't like to do. Which is a six-year-old mentality. You have to do a bunch of shit you don't like doing in life if you want to get results. Sorry, that's the way the world is. Buh, 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 buh. If you don't like a crawl back inside your mum's womb. Ugh! Imagine doing that. Um, mum, it's too hard. It's all too hard, mum. <laughs> don't do that. Become a man! So. <laughs> This is what you do. You trick your brain into thinking that it's exciting. I know I've discussed it before, but are you doing it? This is the way that I constantly motivate myself to learn my lines. Still haven't come anywhere close to them. It's in a fucking month. It's scaring the shit out of me. But the thing is, that the way that I get myself to do it is to sit there and think about all the benefits of attaining it. Because again, it makes it real in your mind now. The reason why you waste your time on a bunch of meaningless shit is because it's easy to do. And the human brain, because it's basically a chimp, just goes, oh, low hanging fruit or better fruit up there? Low hanging fruit. It always goes for the easiest, simplest thing to execute. So you need to make it in your mind extremely real, extremely visit, vivid, extremely motivating the idea of doing the bigger thing. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to write down a bunch of reasons as to why doing these three activities is exciting. We're connecting the dots here, people. It's one of those six-year-old little dot things where they just go like, yeah, it's a giraffe, but I also put mad wings on it. Well, that's not the point of the game. You get a fail, Gavin. So don't fail. Always be doing something, bro. See you next week.